Hey everyone, this is Ryan, and this is a part two video for occlusion. Uh, make sure, if you haven't already, see my part one on occlusion to get some, some basic ideas of why the mandible moves, how it moves, and the range of motion as represented by this lateral diagram uh, called a basalt diagram. All right, so so I already talked about the lateral motion of the mandible. Let's talk a little bit about the frontal motion, or I should say the motion of the mandible from a frontal plane. So this G point was maximum intercuspation. Likewise, this G point is, is representing maximum intercuspation, or the position at which all of the teeth are touching or occluding as tightly as possible. And this R here correlates with this R here, and that's physiological rest position, where the mandible is slightly open from MI, or maximum intercuspation. This point down here would represent E, which is maximum opening. And you can't really see here, but you can imagine a line through here and here would represent the extended extended opening and centric relation and this protruded movement all of these 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 planes here sort of squish back into one line so you, so you can't really appreciate them from the frontal view but what you can appreciate is the lateral motion of the mandible as you uh, move it side to side so Maybe you're wondering, why doesn't it just go straight across? Well, this, these divots here are a result of what's called anterior or, or canine guidance. And canine guidance is essentially when canines, the, the maxillary canines and mandibular canines together, because they're the longest teeth, ensure that the posterior teeth do not touch when the mandible is sliding to the side. So the best way to really see this uh, for yourself, and, and I think the best way to understand it, is either to, to watch a, a video of canine guidance or to have in your hand that, that see-through deniform and slide it from, slide the, the maxillary or, or the mandibular arch to the side, and you'll notice that as you slide, the canines are the first teeth to touch, and those posterior teeth won't touch at all until the canines are tip to tip. And then after that point, you lose canine guidance. So remember, the Pasalt's diagram is representing the mandibular range of motion. So this mand mandible, you can think of it as it's, as it's going over this cusp tip of the canine, it's going down, and then right here is where it's going to reach the cusp tip, and then this rest of the way, you, you lose canine guidance. So it's the same on this side. Hopefully that makes sense. And so these two points here would, would represent the maximum right lateral and the maximum left lateral. Okay, great. So while we're talking about lateral movement of the jaw, let's just hop down to this diagram here. Let me change my color. I'm getting sick of that blue. <laughs> so when we talk about the lateral movement of the mandible, there's sort of two sides. We talk about the working side, which I, I should say this would be considered the working side because you're, the mandible moves in the direction of the working side. So here's where the mandible was, and here's where it moved to. And this would be the non-working or balancing side of the mandible. And then of course if we move the mandible to the left, the roles would be switched. This would be the working side, and this would be the non-working side. For all intents and purposes, this diagram shows that the mandible is going to the right, so the right side is going to be the working side, and this if, if we track one point in the, in the uh, condylar head, you'll see that this W1 
was the middle of the condylar head before motion, and this is where it ended up after motion. So that's called um, the Bennett movement. And now, more important for clinicians is 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 hap the more important concept for clinicians is happening on the the non-working side, and that involves uh, what's called Bennett angle. And so this time we we do the same thing. We take one point in the in the mandibular condyle or the condylar head, and then we see where it ended up after motion. Now you'll notice that the working side stayed in its fossa. The non-working side, <laughs> ironically, did more work and came up and down, ran down this articular eminence as the jaw uh, came out this in this direction. So this, these two points here, we can draw a line through them which represents this line of the angle, and then this line is, is simply um, a, a, a sagittal line, a median line, going um, perpendicular to the coronal plane of the, of the body, however you want to think about it. And this angle between the median line and the, the line between points of, man, of the mandible before and after movement forms the Bennett angle. All right, and just to briefly touch on this concept, um, here we have overjet and overbite. So remember that occlusion has sort of two goals. One is that the teeth need to need to interdigitate properly, and two, they need to uh, occlusion needs to allow for the free motion of teeth. So there can't be obstacles or teeth can't be bumping into one another before all the rest do. And you want to obtain maximum intercuspation. So here we have um, not great occlusion. And what happens is instead of this uh, incisal edge of the mandibular incisor contacting its an antagonist, um, more more incisally, it, it's contacting it more uh, cervically, and this results in two things. One is this this concept of overjet, which which refers to horizontal overlap, and if the overjet's really bad, you'll also see paired with it um, vertical overlap, which is where the the bottom teeth are, are coming too far up and overbite could um, could result in impinging overbite where if this tooth were slid back a little bit it would be touching it wouldn't even be touching this tooth it would be touching the gums which has terrible consequences for things like periodontal disease and gingivitis so these are some of the things that can happen when occlusion is not correct and you would need to undergo uh, most likely orthodontic treatment to get your bite fixed. So I hope this video is helpful and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.